I am Dr. Duygu Kocit from the Department of Cardiology, Hajetaba University Faculty of Medicine. This tutorial is about our recently published review article in Current Pharmaceutical Design in November 2016. Our review paper focuses on the traditional and alternative treatment strategies in patients with refractory angina pectoris. Refractory angina is a persistent, painful condition that is characterized by persistent angina pectoris. It is caused by coronary insufficiency in patients with coronary artery disease that cannot be controlled by a combination of pharmacological therapy, percutaneous interventions, or coronary artery bypass surgery. And the presence of reversible myocardial ischemia has been clinically established to be the cause of the symptoms. Despite significant advances in vascularization techniques, and the agents used in the pharmacological therapy, there is a significant population suffering from refractory angina. And the global prevalence is even increasing. Adverse outcomes associated with refractory angina include impaired health-related quality of life, psychological distress, and restricted self-management and daily activities. In our review, we discuss the current approach to a patient presenting with refractory angina in accordance with the recommendations of European Society of Cardiology, Canadian Cardiovascular Sur uh, Society, and NICE. We also reviewed current antiscemic agents, including the traditional ones, the novel ones, and the ones that are still under investigation, their pharmacological highlights, and their impact on refractory angina, as has been reported in trials. Furthermore, we had a look at the alternative treatment strategies for refractory angina. These alternative modalities can either be invasive or non-invasive. We gave brief information on the use of each modality and their impact on refractory angina, as has been reported in trials. We mentioned pros and cons of each modality too. There are still ongoing investigations evaluating the safety and efficacy of these modalities. And we expect that future guidelines in our clinical practice will be shaped by the findings of these studies.